Hey, it's Sarah. I have the pleasure of introducing you to Max and Joe. They had their life flip upside down in 2012 and they're gonna share a little bit of what they've had to do to the housing that they live in, as well as how they have to make accommodations and plan a little bit more when they're out in the community um, to accommodate um, Joe, who now uses a wheelchair. Um, I hope you enjoy their story and thanks for listening. Bye. Uh, my name is Joe. I am 38 this year. 38. Uh, my name is Max. I'm Joe's husband and I'm 39. 39. Cool. And where do you guys live? In Sharando, Virginia. And then what do you guys do during the day? Um, these days I'm an intern at the Great Augusta Chamber of Commerce. Oh, cool. In Fishersville. Uh, three days a week. Otherwise, I'm, I work on my fitness trying to, you know, not lose anything. Uh, I'm trying to build my gains to Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I'm an investment manager and consultant. In 2012, Max and Joe came to visit the United States after living in their home in Singapore. They came for Christmas and to actually get married. Um, around Christmas time, they were in an accident and Joe sustained a spinal cord injury. I am a very high level um, spinal cord injury. Uh, C1, C2, C1, C2, C2 meaning... incomplete. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I spent about seven months in hospitals during in 2013. Um, uh, she was vent dependent mm -hmm. uh, in a coma for over a month, um, and it was a long journey before she could move anything um, or speak. Yeah. And uh, yeah, seven months in the hospitals, and uh, I think four different hospitals total, including like the original ICUs and all that. Wow. Wow, and then you traveled to go to a rehab center, is that yeah, right? Yes, I mean, um, back from from the UVA ICU, uh, I was there for a month, and then I took a, <laughs> a medical flight to go down to the Shepherd Center in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. She was still in a coma then, so when she was stable enough to, to travel um, so I came from out, ICU to ICU. I came out of wow. coma a little bit. <laughs> I guess at Shepherd is when my real recollection begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And I spent about two and a half months there. Yep. Goodness. Until April of 2013. Wow. But I was still on the ventilator. So uh, after that, we came back to Virginia and I was at the tra UVA Transitional Care Hospital for until June, it was after your birthday. It was about another month and a half, almost two months. For vent weaning. So they finally got me off the vent. And the happy part about that was that I could finally, after six months, eat. Oh, I'm sure. Limited, limited, uh, lots of uh, <laughs> goop and goop, globs of glob, pureed uh, carrots, pureed peas. I say I ate a lot of Ben and Jerry's too. <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my excuse. I can't get anything else. So. Right, mm -hmm. right. So eventually, you were able to kind of learn how to yep. take different um, right. types mm -hmm. of foods and kind of get back to normal yep. foods That's and right. things like that. And so, you, I guess you had speech therapy, occupational, yep. physical therapy, all of the above. Yes, all of the mm -hmm. above. Yeah. And so you're still in. You're still in this working. Um, I still do therapy, but these days, usually. I go once a, once a year or so for like intensive rehab. Okay. So for example, c coming up in December, I'm going to a great facility in Mechanicsville, just outside of Richmond, for three weeks of intensive rehab. Okay. Four to five hours per day. We will stay in Richmond during the week. It's sheltering arms. It's the hospital, yeah. Okay. Um, cool. We will stay in Richmond during the week and then we'll return home on weekends. Wow. So yeah, have you done? You've done that before then? Yes, we have. Okay. Now that's that's cool. It's kind of like kind of like a revamp, like kind yes. of all in one time. So very but good. No speech therapy, because OT and PT. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Very good. Um. So in terms of what other people don't know about how this injury has impacted your life, what has been the number one thing regarding your abilities that you want people to understand? I mean, I would say the the thing that you, we, to an extent, spend most time focusing on and worrying about in the world outside our home is bathrooms. <laughs> oh, yes. Bathrooms mm -hmm. are huge. Mm -hmm. um, so, every, like, if... Well, they're not huge. That's the problem. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> they're too small, and they're steps and so things. So, if we are going anywhere, I, I, I really would like to 
know in advance where is my next bathroom break going to be. Sure. Because of course we are two different sexes, so it's not so easy to get into Mm-hmm. So we, 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 as you know, a heterosexual couple, um, mm-hmm. you need to find a family, bath. a family bathroom ideally, because yes. even if there's a what's your example, bathroom, if it's, you know, the men's room and there's, you know, 20 urinals and 15 <laughs> stalls and a lot of traffic coming in or vice versa, yeah. me going into women's room is not going to work, her going to men's room, we've done it when we have to, but it's right. not comfortable for mm-hmm. anyone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, actually quite a few people that I've interviewed have said the same thing, that they there needs to be more family yeah, bathrooms. Oh, absolutely. Or, or gender neutral ones, like single stall bathrooms are so... But big nice enough too. for wheelchair, I mean, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. yeah. So in regard to your home, going back to where you were living, yep. um, what kind of changes did you have to make to your home? Well, we as did. I said before, we were living in Singapore at the time. Okay, that's right. So, Max's parents have, were very generous. So what they did was they, um, it took some time, but essentially they built a completely accessible wing onto their existing house. Wow. So, mm-hmm. you know, we, awesome. everything is at, on, this, on one level. Mm-hmm. So I would say I'm lucky the most. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what, what kind of things did they do in the accessible wing that worked for you? Right, so they took out, the <laughs> Max's old bedroom is now my, now our bathroom, which includes a very nice big Go and shower. Nice. Um, so that's the key. I say the the big sh- the my old bedroom is not very large, but it's great size for a bathroom. for an accessible bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So yeah, <laughs> the thing is, it's so nice. Sometimes it makes it hard to travel. Yes. Because <laughs> so, you're used to your own mm-hmm, space. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the sinks have have cutouts. Okay. Um, and we actually did. Um, my my sister used to work at a um, at a, a design firm in. Um, in Charlotte, okay. and they do accessible, um, it's called the Accessible Interiors, I think, and they do, um, I think, primarily like doctor's offices and hospitals, it's more like a commercial medical setting, we'll say. Sure. Um, but she was able to, to help with the interior design of awesome. our um, place, and so she could give us the tips. You know, a lot of OTs and PTs give us, gave us advice mm-hmm. too, but mm-hmm. really the plans that she came up with were pretty good from the get-go in terms of cool. having rolled sinks that you could roll under, mm-hmm. um, or countertops you could roll under. Mm-hmm. Um, and like cabinets that you could kind of pull down. Nice. So it's, it's, I guess it's easy to reach. I mean, I still, so a lot of the stuff I still don't really reach if I don't have to, but at least if I wanted to, it's, it's possible. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. So are they cabinets that like kind of were at a normal height, but you could you pull, pull them down? Red the Shelf, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a really good company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They have some really neat stuff. So bathroom, I guess. Do you guys have your own kitchen area we too? Do. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. So that that is that's nice, although it turns out that um, the new wave uh, is what Joe likes to on because the you know we have a, a stove and then under that is the um, okay. oven, kind of the normal setup, mm-hmm. which makes it hard slash impossible slash very unsafe because <laughs> yeah. it's gas for Joe to use that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the new wave is an induction cooker and mm-hmm. it's not very big and we just pull it out, plug it in, whatever we need it, and that thing works really well. Really, that's awesome. Um, and we actually have a. Um, like a, a standing desk. It's not really. It's adjustable height desk. You know, okay. with, with like motorized. Mm-hmm. So you know, if it's a very tall pot, Joe can drop drop it down to the very lowest, and she can look in and, and stir. And then if it needs to be a little bit higher, if she's chopping or something like that, and, and so she can change it. You know, a couple of inches. Awesome. And if I want to use it, it can go up to like a standing height. So sure. it's pretty versatile. So you put that um, on the on the desk and yes. the new wave. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, the new wave. Yeah. Very cool. And it's big. It's wide enough that you can fit a bunch of other stuff on there too. Yeah, that's really cool. No, that's and. That, that helps out for multiple heights, exactly. different people, mm-hmm. and yeah, because I know when Scott sets up the the stove, he's constantly <laughs> trying to do this, and our you know our um, kind of buttons and stuff are on the back, so mm-hmm. he's like having to reach, and like, right. like watch your elbow and <laughs> stuff like that. New wave is great. The only thing is, that as an induction cooker, you have to have magnetic um, cookware. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if you already have a bunch of stuff, then that's great. But if you have a bunch of aluminum stuff or other things that don't really work um, sure. on that, then there's extra costs involved. We'll say with like getting that. Kind of, but cast iron nice. works great. A lot oh, of stuff. Nice. A lot of stuff works. It's not hard to find stuff that works on it. Cool, cool. So now is the sink the sink in the kitchen you can roll under okay, too? Yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And then your microwave. Where does where's your microwave? Microwave um, is kind of next next to the sink. Above the dishwasher. Okay. So I would describe that as not ideal. Our kitchen's no. kind of tiny, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. so we're constrained by space. So in a perfect world, I think we would have an area where Joe could pull up 
closer to the microwave, like even have a cutout under it. Sure. But the way we have it set up now, accessible, but not Yeah, not, not ideal. Not ideal. Right, right. you can still use it. Yeah. Right. No, that makes sense. Um, so if you, if you had to change anything in your home or maybe like long-term plans for a home, would there be anything um, different that you would do or things that you would change or add? Sounds like it's pretty well set up. Yeah, it is pretty nice. No, well. no real. The oven is a bit tricky. Mm. So like I can, it's I do not. I, I will turn it on and remove the racks to preheat it. But in order to put stuff in, or taking uh, popping stuff out, I I I have to rely on magnets or somebody else. Yeah. Sure. Well, maybe you should be doing that anyway. But I would say, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, just from a safety perspective. But if we mm -hmm. were to redo it, we might have the oven at. Not, maybe not countertop height, but have it up like maybe like okay. I don't know, knee height, or we, we try to figure that out and see if there's a height that would work for mm -hmm. Joe. Mm -hmm. um, because where it is now, it's it's really not ideal. Because ideal. Um, the oven is below, it's too low, and mm -hmm. the stove top is too high. So basically, mm -hmm. Joe can't use our like main cooking area. Standard, yeah. The standard thing. Now, and I've heard people say that too because. Like I've heard someone say that they don't make bake bake anymore mm -hmm. because they don't have any trunk control and right. so like anything heavy they're mm -hmm. gonna drop and then it's hot coming out. Right. And so. if you have sensation um, difficulties, we'll say or, you know you could really hurt yourself exactly. easily. If yeah, you can't just set it on your legs really quick, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like <laughs> and then the dishwasher is it like a typical dishwasher as uh, well? It, it's yes, it is. Um, mm -hmm. I guess it's smaller though. Yeah, it's kind of a. Slightly smaller than average, like high efficiency the way it, dishwasher. How I can, but it's ideal because it's next to the sink, which is a cutout, so I can drive my park myself under the sink and open the dishwasher and load it or unload it. So it's it's pretty it's pretty ideal in a nice spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's super helpful to be able to like face forward to do yes. what you're doing and yeah, no, that's good. Um, so what changed about driving, getting from your home to appointments? Well, I, I don't, I never, well, okay. She's a big city girl so and she I never really know. drove one I year. Drove like one year in 2001. <laughs> okay. So, and after that we lived in cities where you can take cabs or bike around. Yeah. So. Public transportation, yeah. No, so what changed is this, now I have a. I have to have chauffeurs. Sure. Private chauffeurs. Yeah. yeah. Well, and because, I mean, where you guys live, there is no, I mean, no public transportation. Yes, we live in the middle of nowhere. So the only thing, so we have um, an MV1 accessible vehicle, um, which we generally like a lot, although it's pretty weird looking. Not everyone <laughs> loves its uh, funky style. <laughs> um, but it, it, we, we like that, and it works well for us. Um, mm -hmm. But Joe had tried, has tried driving and may try again um, mm -hmm. with the occupational therapist. Because of my, my injury, I've got uh, neck fusion surgery, so I've got pins in my neck, so I can't really turn my head. Turning your head's uh, the hard part. And also, just one having only have one, one hand and one leg, <laughs> plus be unable to move your neck very much. I can understand it's, it's a tough. Yeah. Scary, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Sure, no, that makes it that makes a difference. So, are you typically the the chauffeur? Yes, we do have other caregivers though. So, oh, so, um, so a couple of times a week, um, we have other caregivers. But yes, no, I, so it's either me or someone else um, sure. that drives you around. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool, cool. Um, so, how has your um, injury impacted how you do things in the community for leisure, recreation, social activities? Um. So, f for social activities, for example, I don't really like when people do stand around and like high the tables, for example. I like when people sit down so I can see them, I mm. can talk to them, because otherwise it's kind of hard to be a part of a group. So if you, if we, you know, Joe worked really hard and we lived in Beijing, Singapore. Um, so she probably misses how much she doesn't have to work as much like she used to. Yeah. Um, but even if you go out with friends and you want to go to like, you know, a bar or a brewery or something around here, mm -hmm. and if the only seating is bar seating. is bar seating or high tables, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And even in, in your in your house or someone's house where you're having like a house party and people, you know, standing around mm -hmm. having hors d'oeuvres and, but jo, you know, Joe can't really stand, you know, she can, but it's... Uh, <laughs> Not really something she can do socially. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it's that has a big impact. Sure. Yeah. Like interacting with others, and then if it's a really long time, then you're you know turning yeah. your neck. And <laughs> exactly. And looking up. And, and yeah. And oftentimes the different conversations going on, 
And normally with lean in try and listen, but of course you can't really lean in without rolling over some toes. <laughs> so I sure. sometimes end up kind of alright, it is fun. <laughs> so I mean but that's that is I guess it's a downside of, that's why I prefer when people, you know, have a sit down, down meal. Meals. Like Joe Joe uh, your Joe's idea of socialization yes. setting. You sit down and you can chit chat, you know? Sure. Yeah. And also that at, at, at you know at, at say parties or you know social gatherings where you're mm -hmm. standing around people will be talking to you from different angles and when you're kind of in a wheelchair there's like if joe wants to you know we can just like turn and it's, it's very easy but for joe she has to to get her entire wheelchair to turn she has to turn it on first and then it's like a big deal and by the time she does all that the situation that she wants to see is over <laughs> yeah well then you have to make sure there's no way mm -hmm. like right you worry about someone's toes exactly um, exactly yeah so yeah no that makes sense how about, um, I guess, getting into other people's homes, like if somebody's having... Uh, we always, well, we, <laughs> we have to do a pretty detailed recon beforehand. Mm -hmm. So we have bought ramps. Okay. So we have three ramps with different lengths. <laughs> um, so it usually involves the friend, like, doing, scoping out and saying, my, my door is this width, we have two steps in the front, and a little landing area, and then it's one little threshold to go into the house. So it's, yeah, it's a bunch of planning, mm -hmm. and sometimes I do, I'll do a recon trip in advance, and you know, take measurements or whatever. But Check we're we figured that out, yeah. So we have a two really short ramps. One that will do like one step, that's super lightweight and convenient. And then, but if you need to do two to three steps, we've got another ramp a little bit longer. And then for really like four or five steps, we've got an epically long ramp. Wow. Yeah. No, that that's great. Like we we've done the same thing. Um, uh, but I think we need to get more lightweight ramps because I think Scott has like ATV ramps and they're like really, really. <laughs> well, even, yeah, there, I don't think there are any super great lightweight, lightweight ramps because I put a lot of research into it. And oh, they uh, have to hold the wheelchair, right? They have to hold, the, you mm -hmm. know, the wheelchair, which is 250 pounds itself. So exactly. it can't be light duty stuff. Exactly. Have you ever had to just, I mean, have you been pretty successful in being able to get into people's homes or have there been some where you're just um, like, it's not going to work? Most of the time, yes. Or... There was once um, to get into somebody's house, I just transferred into a manager chair and had to get lifted up into the house. Yeah, yeah that was kind of in the early days before we had as many ramps. Um, and honestly, we might, that was pretty, <laughs> to be, pretty awkward. If we know where we're getting in, into, we might have declined that invitation, to be honest. Day, so. <laughs> it was also, there's a blizzard going on, we were <laughs> slipping on the ice, we had to carry Joe up like four, five steps into this old kind of colonial style house. It was wow. kind of an expedition. Really hairy. Yeah. A little hairy. So in retrospect, we probably wouldn't <laughs> do that because it wasn't really a safe thing to do. Sure, sure. No, that makes sense. Yeah. But other than that, we've been successful because we plan. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, well, and I think that's something to like mention too, is because I don't think people realize how much planning goes into just being able to make a trip, like yes. and just say, doing a re little recon, like you have to to look prior to going and preparing. And, so, and sometimes friends are so kind, they say, please stay with us. Why stay in the hotel? We know it's just, it's accessible, but yes, it can get I can get into your house, but I can't get into your bathroom. Mm -hmm. So in the end. My to bring me like pans of water. I have to do my my morning routine at the at the dinner at the breakfast table. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit awkward. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we've had those invitations as well, and so you do. I mean, you have to kind of take everything into account mm -hmm. and like, can I get into the bed? How tall is the bed? Mm -hmm. And and all of those things. Yes. What is one thing in your community that you would want to change to make it easier for you to participate in things you enjoy. More family bathrooms. More family bathrooms. <laughs> Without a doubt, that would be my number one, number um, one. wish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because otherwise, if you drive anywhere, you just think, okay, where where can I find a bathroom? And you, we did a trip down somewhere, and we just spent like epically long periods of time just trying to find a bathroom that, that would work. Yeah. And we wasted a lot of time that way. Yeah, road trips can be kind of stressful. I mean, you, you look for certain name brands like Target or Walmart will tend to have the malls. You should have to get most them. modern shopping malls do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, sometimes you think a place would and it turns out not to or it's out of order or there's sure. construction going on or something and then you have to totally yeah. rethink. For example, Universal Studios. Um, we thought, oh, no, they're, they're so disabled friendly. Mm -hmm. Surely they must have a family bathroom somewhere. I mean, the kids go there all the time. Wrong. Wrong. So, we didn't have anything. We, in the end, and the, the, I 
in the, in the morning when I first got there, it was not busy, so I meant to sneak into the men's bathroom. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when it was, you know, a lot of people, I couldn't do it. So, but we found... No, a, we, a, we didn't, a, we didn't know, find, we, we hunted we, we and asked. We a first aid station. Uh, yeah, well, we, we asked around for accessible bathrooms and no one knew anything about it. And, and they said, go to the first aid station, which is like like a miniature hospital. Right. <laughs> you know, with like nurses there for people who uh, injured themselves in the mm -hmm, park. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, we don't have any injuries. We just need to use your wheelchair accessible bathroom. Yeah. They, they were fine with that, obviously. But well, still, it was like awkward. We had to go way off. There's only one of those in the park, and the park is mm -hmm. large. So um, wow. it was, did take a lot of time. I mean, it's probably spent an hour, you know, your day at the amusement park, and you spend however much money, and you spend an hour, hour and a half of that. Like worrying about bathrooms. Worrying about bathrooms. Like, yeah, yeah, because it's hot. You know, you have to drink, but then you know you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. Now, and you guys travel quite a bit. Like you've done a lot of travel. Yeah, I mean, we travel. That was Universal Studios in in, last year. in LA. In the, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And have you found um, a certain type of um, destination more accessible than others, or? Uh, cruises are pretty accessible. That's why we like them. Mm -hmm. um, destination is more. Well, we've only done one flight, but it worked yeah. well. Mm -hmm. That was to Las Vegas. To LA, we took um, a train <laughs> from from here, which was um, fifty. Was it fifty three hours? Um, each way. Oh, wow. Each way, one hundred and six hours total. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a very long time. Um, <laughs> but we got an accessible cabin, which is um, which included a bathroom. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was, from that perspective, that was perfect. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, and then you you mentioned that like you had to bring her food because you couldn't get to the food. Is that right? Well, well no, they they actually um, will bring the food to you. The stewards uh, on Amtrak. Amtrak's accessibility services are, are pretty good. It's just like being in a prison cell. It's kind of like being in a prison cell <laughs> on the downside. Here's your food. Exactly. Yeah, food is through the stop. Because they 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 don't allow for safety reasons. I guess wheelchairs to to cross between the carriages. Oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. So I could go explore the train, but, but Joe couldn't um, sure. unless we stopped at a place and then it would have to be a long stop because they'd have to pull, either pull out mm -hmm. um, either a ramp system or a, an elevator system. Gotcha. And so it's not, if they're only stopping a place for like, you know, three minutes, it's just <laughs> pointless. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That makes sense. So I'm sure it's just a lot of research and mm -hmm. um, kind of investigating, mm -hmm. yeah, planning ahead. Asking a lot of questions, and then hotels you have to worry about you know rolling showers, um, mm -hmm. having accessible accessible rooms, double checking your reservation you know several times just to make sure that they haven't somehow lost that <laughs> key mm -hmm. information. Now, do you guys typically take your like own equipment with you when you travel? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we travel, we do not travel that. It's like you have a bunch of like luggage, and it's like you're going going for two nights. Like, yes, in the office. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, and we're bringing everything from mm -hmm. home. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, do you have any advice for anyone interacting with you for the first time that's curious about your disability? Like, have people asked any weird questions or anything like that? Um, no, generally, I'm pretty open. I mean, if you want to know, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. The one thing, I know people are just being nice, mm -hmm. but the one thing that's a bit irksome is like, oh, uh, are you getting any better? Can you walk? Yeah, it's like, you know, you don't ask the blind person if you can see. Sure. So I know the people are just being nice, but that is the one thing that, you know. But yeah. otherwise, I mean, if they want to ask, I'm pretty open mm -hmm. about telling, telling them. Mm -hmm. Other than family bathrooms, <laughs> do you have any advice for businesses um, and community organizations for making things more welcoming when you go in? Lower so, lower desk area, like in the reception desk. Uh -huh. Make sure that there's at least like a, like a cutout. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the reception desk is, is you know, <laughs> I'm here. chest height. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then if you need to sign something, it's like you know, use the back of your cell phone or you know to sign a piece of paper. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really no. So at least I mean, most um, the average person is better off with a, a standing kind of level desk. Sure. Sort of, but if sure. they and most nice or hotel chains who have thought about it do, mm -hmm. but to have a some area. Maybe off the side, or you know, somewhere where mm -hmm. um, a person in a wheelchair can, you can talk to them easily without mm -hmm. them looking up, and or, you know, yeah, exactly, a that place to write. I I like to go to stores where it's nice and the the aisles are nice and wide. Mm -hmm. So for example, some of the older places are a little bit tight, 
So I try to, I generally avoid those unless I really need to go there. Sure. Like with restaurants and that, of course, you, it's all about square, how much you can earn per square foot. So they try to cram all this like, seating in there. And when it's busy, sometimes it's a bit like, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. And <laughs> people are happy to move, but it's a little bit embarrassing. Right, right. Yeah. Like, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we, you know, if, I guess, but restaurants these days, a lot of them are quite, open mm -hmm. so it's not a big problem i would say but this some places have a bit, a bit of a tight squeeze sure sure no that makes sense has this impacted any relationships in any way <laughs> i'm sure it has but well see for us it's, for us it's hard to we, we lived our you know in singapore and mm -hmm. prior to that beijing um and you know so it was able-bodied mm -hmm. and um we live in big cities mm -hmm. so we were here for supposed to be two weeks right and so we were kind of in but we just never went back mm -hmm. we had some mm -hmm. of her relatives helped out with um, clearing out the apartment which we just never went back to right. um, so it's like such a radical change that our, our lives are so different pre and post mm -hmm. and not just because of the um you know because of the accident but all that's all related but it's not just sure. because of the physical and medical side it's also because of our our social um, all your and of yeah, things. our social life, our work life, uh, all of our yeah. everything's been it's completely um, changed and uprooted yeah. by it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very hard for us to <laughs> to answer that question because there's just so much has changed, but so much related to you know the wheelchair, for example, and some mm -hmm. of it's, it's just not. It's just just a different place. <laughs> yeah, kind of went from one place to mm -hmm. another so quickly, and right. you know, everything everything changed. Yeah. Is there anything that you wish more people knew about you? Maybe not to ask her too many questions while she's eating. <laughs> because <laughs> Because I yeah, I have yeah, I do have difficulty swallowing, so I try I really have to concentrate on eating. But at the same time I don't want people to think I'm being unfriendly. Sure. Because I I'm listening. I mean I listen to a lot. But mm -hmm. I just don't cannot speak this right now. Right. Uh -huh. And you don't want to choke or exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Both Max and Joe had a little bit more information to share about transportation and getting around different cities. Yeah. yeah. I mean, traveling, we, um, each city is really different. Like in DC, we go up there and visit friends and it's mm -hmm. getting wheelchair accessible taxi has it's pretty easy, pretty easy. Oh, it's really not great. a problem at all mm -hmm. um, and we kind of thought that all big cities were like that that is not true <laughs> oh. because um, in Atlanta and it turns out the Atlanta buses actually are, are pretty accessible um, hmm. but uh, we had planned on taking taxis because we didn't know that the buses mm -hmm. were accessible and it turned out the taxis were just not available and it was just you need to give 24 hours notice 24 hours of notice oh, yeah. yeah that's not very convenient no <laughs> and the same in, in LA when we visited her her brother last year hmm. um, we uh, yeah they were like we would we need to go to a friend's booth for the wedding related stuff barbecue that one of his friends was having and um, like oh we'll, we'll check on a taxi and like uh, can't how do it today how about tomorrow I'm, like, oh, I'm afraid that's not how events work yeah <laughs> they can't move the barbecue yeah <laughs> Wow, yeah. So, I mean, and that's just different, but how cities do it and what they offer yep. and, and things like that. So again, research and planning. Yeah, so we kind of we kind of knew that. We ended up renting a vehicle, so we had we had backup information. Now our backup plan was to rent a van. We we're just hoping that we could you know save a bit of money by not having to rent a van. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we did have to rent a van. There right. was pretty much no other way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. Cool. Well, thank you guys. Sure. Thanks for listening to Max and Joe's story. I think their story actually gives a good glimpse into the lives of individuals when, you know, something traumatic happens and their lives are turned upside down and the, the amount of things that have to be done to um, just get back to living in a home and um, thinking about um, getting out in the community and transportation. I think they did a great job at explaining all the little details that they need to think about um, in living their lives. And I think that's important for others to understand as well. You know, things like this are unexpected and having a place to live um, and being able to go out in your community is really important. And I think um, it should be easier for us to make that transition because we know that unexpected things um, are unfortunately gonna happen. Um, so thanks again to these two for sharing their story, um, giving us a little glimpse into their life. And I hope you join us next time for more stories. Thanks, bye.